Welcome back, one and all, as we see PSG take a 1-0 advantage in their quest to get themselves uh, <laughs> there. Get themselves, yeah, see? At the, he, they know. Wolf they gets know. it. Wolf gets it, man. They know what to do it. They know how to go for it. But, I mean, that's exactly what we want to be seeing from Adam. Is, Thank you for showing us on the screen. This is Mark Amoshi. Yeah, we all agree, Wolf. Or Mo. M O. Oh, oh, oh. Was, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> with not it. Dude, with that it last today. game, I was, yeah. <laughs> I was actually just asleep, and my mouth was moving on its own. <laughs> it's just an incredible ventriloquism. <laughs> yeah, you were actually doing both both spots. No one knew no that one his knew, co caster fell asleep. Seamless. Seamless. <laughs> oh, all right. So to give credit to PSG, one, they executed their comp very well. Two, I think their draft prep in hindsight is even better than I thought it was. I liked the, initially the call out on the. Uh, what is Adam going to play if we just early pick Kennen? Didn't love the first answer that we saw there. But then also, just with the Zaya ban, as we see the Kennen ban from BDS, not wanting a repeat of that. But Crowny not wanting to play Kaisa at all, meaning that you yeah. can get that for free later as one of the other S tier picks. And hit the Zeri was not really great. Who knows how much of that was just the team not being super proactive. The Ezreal was something that you did not want to see either, I think. So there's a question of what else does BDS have in the tank now? Or has this lower bracket run given PSG enough data to make this a, a quick series? We, we've seen that before, like, for example, in the LCK, where it felt like T1 kind of got figured out as you watch more and more throughout the, that playoff run. Yeah, and it does feel like for BDS, like that, that last comp worked, like, earlier in the year. That was your front-to-back team fight. You were maybe against the Cassante up in top side rather than the Cannon or something like that. And that's where that Zeri kind of front-to-back team fight on both sides ends up being uh, beneficial. This time, BDS do not want to try that anymore. They want to go for something that gives Adam some agency. And with the Maokai replacing the Renekton ban on the side of PSG, they're going to first pick the Renekton. Yep, grabbing that one up here for Adam. People always get mad that it's not gods, it's gourds, but we're happy with the gourds. We'll take the R <laughs> snuck in there. And uh, I think Adam's Renekton has been pretty good, so happy to see him with a little bit higher lane agency champion. Yeah, something you can have a, a bit more emphasis on. Something that Sheo can also go up to as well. We've seen Sheo kind of obviously leaning very heavily onto the Sejuani. When you have a Sejuani with that passive and you obviously want to try and get the CC down, the Renekton is a perfect combination. So I want to see them really try and lock that in if they can. Rel gets locked in here for Woody, you would imagine, as we haven't really seen many junglers, if any at all, to be honest, which are going for the uh, jungle Rel anymore. It does feel like it is definitely a solid support pick for the moment. But now, the Kai'Sa locked in again. BDS will have an opportunity to kind of pick into something. But again, like, you're burning. I feel like the prep from PSG has been so solid because they really do feel like, especially in the bot side, they're kind of going, cool, the Kai'Sa's never going to be in any real danger. And we can just kind of, you know, let you pick whatever the hell you want outside of the Zaya. Yeah, and I expect if they do not take Crowny's champion here in this 2-3 phase, that PSG will yet again ban the Kalista. So, of course, BDS on the same page, picking up the Kalista before it can get to that phase 2 bans here. We'll probably go support as well. We'll see if they want to go the recon, or maybe they'll just hold support in case they see another nice Taric angle. But uh, the Jace for Maple was very, very good. So maybe they just combo the Jace early on and continue that kind of poke core. You do not have the Maokai to set it up. And Maokai Jace, I cannot overstate how annoying and obnoxious oh, that yeah. is when you're trying to set up around objectives. You get slowed into Hex, uh, the Shock Blast. We'll see if they want to go because they have the tools there already a little bit. It does feel like as well, though, for BDS, if they do want to go for that chase, it would mean that you're very AD reliant and you're looking at things like a Rel, maybe even a Poppy. They will have a very easy time just building up those resistances and coming into those mid-game team fights. Very, very hard for a Kalista to try and burn them down as quick as she would probably like. But for now, the Nautilus gets locked in here for BDS and the Poppy gets locked in as well for Aja. So he is she. They're building to kind of just, you know, almost have a front to back themselves this time. This looks like a matched lanes situation. Of course, technically, a lot of these can be flexed. You can see Rel go jungle. Like you said, Poppy can go jungle as well. Technically, you can see these kinds of things, but most likely this is bot and tops matched, which means we are going to have some bands eating into both champion pools at the same time, potentially. Uh, and I got to say, I wonder what they're going to do about the Azir from Nuke. We saw that it was pretty good, still outmanaged to outplay it and deal with it largely fine. So they might not think it's worth the ban this time around. Yeah, they might think to themselves, look, it's fine as long as we have like things to answer to. And I feel like the Kai'Sa was great. The Jace did its job in the laning phase. And then the Kai'Sa was able to assassinate him pretty much on the back of every single fight. So right now... Just kind of targeting that uh, champ pool. Ooh, interesting. So they believe that's going to be Junja on the poppy in the jungle for PSG. They don't believe that the Renekton is going to be going into that matchup themselves. So PSG maybe, maybe having a little bit of smoke and mirrors here with a couple of the picks. Yeah, I wonder if the 
Sejuani ban was at all maybe an indication that actually they have their jungler picked already. True. Because otherwise you could maybe leave the Sejuani up and first pick that in R4. Again, the Sheo Ivern taken away. Sorry, sir. What else do you have with the two tanks gone and the Ivern plucked off the table? We've seen Sheo, I think, play Rel a little bit this tournament, though he did not have the best performance on it. And won't uh, be able to get that either. Yeah. It's, uh, we're going down the uh, the, the rabbit hole. And, so, and the funny thing is, again, a couple of junglers still there, but does Sheo play them? That's the big question. Yeah, the, the AD bruisers that are kind of the follow-up to the tanks are still available. We've seen some Vi, we've seen some Lee Sin, we've seen different things. Wukong. Wukong, yeah, they're still playing that. So there, there are options. We'll just have to see what Sheo wants to go here now that his priority ones are at least pinched a little bit. Well, the last ban coming out from BDS was the LeBlanc, so they were trying to go for a couple of different options. I do like the Cassante ban coming out here uh, just to kind of make sure Adam doesn't have just a neutral lane. And Aja maybe feeling confident Ooh. to go for something a little bit more aggressive. And I mean, honestly, Poppy Jacks going into that top side, that is a scary 2v2. Even a 2v in, in, a, in a 3v2, I'd still kind of say maybe you know, the, the Jax and the Poppy will come out on top. Yeah, this is a, a interesting matchup here. We'll see actually if they're going to end up going the Talia jungle to flex in some AP here a little bit to get some more damage and setup. Talia Jace maybe? Could also just be Nuke's Talia. We've seen yeah. a lot of mid Talia as well. Well, you called it. If this gets locked in, it is. Okay, so we're getting ourselves the Talia jungle for Sheo and then the Syndra in mid lane. So I feel like BDS would have really liked to be able to see what the mid lane picked before they tried to try and flex this one around. But it is, unfortunately, the way that the blue side goes. And now, PSG, you full information of what they're trying to go for here on BDS. How do you respond? I mean, Maple, that is an option. But that is very short range composition. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you're, you're killing champions because you ain't sieging tur turrets. <laughs> No, all right, we're doing it. PSG saw that last game. They agreed it was Bedge. Yeah. They want some Wokage. They're slamming this <laughs> all melee composition effectively. I mean, you do have a what, little what, bit Watch of it be two kills in 20 minutes again. If you somehow yeah. only die twice in 20 <laughs> minutes, someone is not playing the game correctly with this composition. I mean, absolutely. I look like the pure amount of kind of mobility and just engage options you have for PSG makes me feel like you are looking for heavy, heavy skirmishes. BDS on the other side, they're looking to try and just kind of set up around objective. You've got two control mages effectively with the Talia and the Syndra. So you're looking to try and, you know, kind of zone them off from any kind of big fight. And while it's still a more traditional composition, the game plan here for BDS is radically different. This is not scaling in three lanes, surviving. Let's see if PS if we can win by doing nothing. Turns out they could not win by doing nothing in the previous nope. game. So this time you have Renekton in the early game, you have Syndra, strong early game champion, as well as the Kalista. And they have completely flipped the script into early game. And even Talia is extremely fast, clearing and moving around the map and trying to make things happen. And you have set up in all three lanes now to land follow-up flicks. So this is a very, very strong comp out of BDS. And we have seen just yesterday the fact that they can actually turn the gears and actually go for these early game compositions just yesterday with the Kalista. Absolutely. And I think that this is... Honestly, for me, I know it sounds like a redundant statement, but in a best of five, this is a a massive moment for BDS in terms of the champion pools, in terms of what they're able to bring out. If the Kalista doesn't come out and smash, all of a sudden, game three becomes in, almost impossible to look at. Where do you go? Where do you look at? So they need to hit the ground running. They need to start smashing people in these phases and just trying to build that confidence back. Yeah, you got to find your footing in a series, figure out which champions are working, which lanes that you are winning to then build appropriate game plans moving forward. And they basically lost across the board last time around despite you know getting first blood. So this time around, we'll have to see where they want to put their resources early, which lane they feel like they can get advantages in for BDS. Otherwise, they might be staring down a quick 3-0. They might be staring down a quick 3-0, as you can see. BDS immediately going on the offensive with the Talia and the Nautilus. Does make a hell of a lot of sense, but I think that, yeah, PSG, they're well aware for it, but they're not going to be worried about that one whatsoever. I uh, was always loved the Nautilus rush strats level one. We'll see now what he's able to do with it. But don't forget, you can connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive experimentation emote. Get yourselves, you know, emoting is a massive part of the uh, the LPL. And hello, Arcane is now lore. It is. Well, it's, it's all canon. Canon, that's what I yeah. meant. Yeah, yeah. Can, the lore is canon from Arcane, whatever. Yes. <laughs> English, who cares? <laughs> it's a it's very not like flexible the English language. It's a anything. flexible language. It's, it is. But I saw people, a lot of people were getting mad about that. I don't. I understand why, but I also I like to think of it like the Legend of Zelda lore, where everything is canon, every single game is canon, and it's just like timelines and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's there's just a, flex it all about. Yeah, Emily Rand always tweets about this Macross guy, <laughs> has a very similar perspective <laughs> where uh, it's all just retellings of things. Yeah, you know, and all the all the space stuff is real as well. The Star Guardians. Versus yeah, sure, the sure. Why not? 
<laughs> Anything can be lore. You can tell. Can you tell I'm prepping myself for a very slow early game? <laughs> yeah, we are. The last game has was conditioned it a, us. Was it a little, a little too much? A little too obvious? We, we might have been conditioned from the previous game to prepare lore topics. Yeah. We, we came, we came up with our podcast list for this game. Should it be slow? But this time around, it should not be. If we have a slow game here drastically incorrect yeah. play of these compositions. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's an objectively incorrect way of playing these compositions. But I like the little bit of aggression we saw there from uh, Aja on the top side, just kind of scouting out, making sure he knew where Shea was starting off with. Good, decent ward there as well. So they're going to have a pretty decent idea of where the Selene is going to be going and how they're going to be able to react to those moves. Yeah, bot side should definitely be your strongest lane. Like we said, they're set up everywhere, but the one that is most obviously winning early on should be Crowny. And Clearing down to him makes sense. Jinjia does not want any part of that 3v3, so instead he's going up to protect the Jax on the top side, potentially. Uh, and Jax into Renekton is pretty pretty comfortable matchup. Like any Renekton matchup, if you play it poorly, the Renekton can punish you, but he does have a fair amount of matchups that, skill-wise, the other side should win. That's the thing as well. We'll see Sheo moving maybe a little bit aggressively in this bot side, but I already love, you see it there on the bottom right, there is a little a little ward there in the, in the try brush for the side of uh, PSG, so they will know exactly What's going on? Should it be any kind of shenaniganery in that bot side? But I mean, good from Sheo to kind of say, right, where did the poppy start? We actually got no information on Junji at the start, so they get that for themselves. Yeah, they had one of their traditional BDS kind of aggressive level ones thrown in there as Asha trying to go for Demolish Brock took probably a little bit more damage than he wanted to. Adam doing a good job jumping on top, punishing him for trying to walk through the wave. And because they kind of show bot side, Asha knows there's absolutely no one to punish him for doing this, though, so going for a little bit of cheeky dirty farming there. Grabbing that wave away and keeping pressure under Adam. I mean, you're level four on the uh, Poppy. As, uh, as Nymera would say, that is a uh, full build Poppy now at this stage. You've got a full build jungle Poppy is level three, and that's it. You don't need anything else in your arsenal. But see, they want to kind of go for a little, a little bit crazy. I love the movement speed that Junja's building in towards it as well. He's got the phase rush and he's got the blue smite. So once he's getting that fully upgraded, he's going to be moving around the map pretty damn quickly. Oh, nice E by Maple landing that after Nuke had burned his own disengage on the E. One of those kinds of mini games where the Akali can, at six, have an easier job with multiple mobility uh, spells sticking around. But pre six, if you have the E up for Nuke, you are going to be just comfy pushing the Akali off of you. And uh, right now, I think uh, PSG are doing a good job understanding the power points. Sheo hovering around on the bot side of the map. Looked into the jungle, went back, cleared his jungle, and now Junjia making his way down here, but it is warded. A lot of information available here to the side of BDS. Yeah, they'll have full now. Sheo is on the back side of this one here. And this is the thing, when you get this early in, this, in the game, it's more about who reacts afterwards rather than who engages first, and that can be a detriment to the side of PSG as they look for something. They're going to fully engage onto this one. Nice, nice. one from Labrov. They're going to get the flick back as well. And Junja, he's a little bit of a taxi there. Flash away by Crowny as he finally gets the Ren coming in. Wako getting a fair bit of damage put into him as the stones are chucked in the back of his head. Oh, Glanz, the oh, 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 oh. pop, it actually brings him to his doom. Did not want to take that hook a one for one. Had the mechanics, but maybe not the right call. They're giving the kill back after what was a very nice setup. Lebrov is actually so good at interrupting other people's move lock, especially against the Rel. He did it all yesterday on the Alistar pick, and this time around, landing the Q to buffer the chain CC. Kept him alive and allowed them to win that initial trade, but then got a little too aggressive afterwards. Yeah, just unfortunately the... He was feeling himself. Yeah, just a little too much uh, kind of like, yeah, we did it. Gonna amp it himself up, but it is important to note that both AD carries picked up those kills, and again, just really good read there from BDS, and a great ward, as we mentioned earlier, to spot out Junja on that path bot side. Yeah, I, I liked the play out of BDS, and it is unfortunate because if you can get the one kill advantage, you start snowballing this Kalista. This does keep Wako relevant. You also maybe could have farmed a plate in the 3v2 situation, forced Jinji to hover under turret. You know, th there was a lot more that could come positively if they did not trade that one kill back. Sheo, you are level four. Ah, he doesn't have a flick back either. And this is where the problem will come in, a flash away. I mean, honestly, if he do, if, if, if Aja flashes in on top of that, he probably gets the kill. No one was coming to save him. No, he could definitely get the kill. Just a question of if you get out afterwards. Instead, just happy to take the flash and keep his to play aggressively during lane phase. One of flash. Oh. Yeah, they're going to look for something there. Is a uh, very spooked out Mark knows what's coming in next. They're going to get a cleanse out of Crowny. They're going to be able to pop up the steadfast presence. Don't even need it. Wako picks up a second kill, and PSG, they're picking up the pace. Yeah, both teams knowing that this is not your normal slow scaling game plan here, and putting a lot of pressure down on the side of BDS. PSG find 
Sheo in the jungle, and then while he's worrying about what's going on, on the top side of the map, Jinjia has a clever path to get behind the bot lane there and set up uh, a nice kill onto Crowny, who had no sums. That transfers over to this objective take. We'll see if they really want to contest this one, but it's going to be too slow on the map. Maybe just trying to land a Q over the wall. Yeah, I was going to say, Maple's already moving down, so there's not really much you can do about that. They're going to be able to get a flick back nicely done, but Sheo has no flash. He's nowhere to go, and that's going to be an easy kill to Maple Sheo. Oh, boy. That's just not where you need to be. You just need to see that they're taking it and walk away. Yeah, what do you, like, you're hoping for a one in a million, somehow he doesn't smite correctly and you land a Q over the wall, and the risk versus reward payoff for that was not there at all. Gives a free one over to Maple, who you already have the bot lane moving a little bit. You got two kills on the Kai'Sa, you got Waka going. Here's his play again. Nice instant cleanse, but just too much CC available with the Rel and the Poppy. No flash it means easy kill there. Waka grabbing that one back. So he's he's fed. Now you got your mid lane going pretty well as well, since Shale is just hovering around and without the flash available, already taken off from the top side of the map. Aja is getting his mid laner fed indirectly there. Yeah, like straight up, that just comes down to small little plays we saw earlier. It's Aja getting the push in top, which leads to an invade, which leads to a flash being burned, which then leads to a kill. It's just all these small little moments, all these dominoes, and you can see another one falling down a second. Nuke oh, in a lot of trouble. The flash, ooh. Nicely done there by Nuke. If he waits even a split second longer there, he's almost certainly dead. Yeah, I wonder if Aja could have just flash at him and then have the Q for the follow-up. Not going to be able to work there, unfortunately. But still, transferring that pressure around the map will give Adam some breathing room, at least, to grab some turret plates and some gold. But this is kind of the Adam treatment that you usually see. He's usually the one getting the push, moving into the enemy jungler, going to the mid lane. And here, it's Aja doing it. Getting advantages for both his bot side and mid lane now. And this is the thing, I think for Aja, I feel like this is a great moment for him as a player because I feel like it's not, you know, kind of an understatement that a lot of us coming into this were saying Adam's probably the best top laner in the play-ins. Like a lot of people are kind of saying this guy is going to be able to smash people in the lane, and he was. But Aja has stepped up magnificently so far this tournament, really showing his champion diversity, being able to make the right plays, the roams, his gameplay knowledge. It really has, honestly, been so impressive here from the PSG top laner. Yeah, absolutely neutralizing. No, not just neutralizing, getting the better of Adam so far in this series, like you said. And even on his own team, regardless of the rest of the field, you hear more about Waco being absolutely crazy, him and Woody having a really, really good synergy between the two of them, and Maple, the veteran, the leader, the shot caller. So much 110 experience. games! Yeah, whoa! <laughs> and then meanwhile, here's Aja quietly kind of helping win the whole series for them right now. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I think it was Ender mentioned it on, I think it was like day three or something like that, maybe day two, is, oh, Sheo, you still don't have a flash, and you were hit by an E, so now he's gonna get scattered the week coming in. This, oh, the perfect execution does end up killing him off right there at the end. Nuke no flash. has no flash, and is he gonna get stunned in there? There's gonna be the shattering strike, and Woody says, I roamed up from bot, that's my kill. I mean, this is starting to snowball away right now. Yeah, Woody's seeing a lot of death around his eyes. He wants one kill for himself. The bloodthirsty <laughs> support grabs that one away. Uh, but it's feeling really good for PSG right now. The gold lead does not look Go again. nearly as bad as it feels watching. Yeah, we're watching, waiting, seeing if they can go for something. There's the double hex flash. Nobody ever expects the double hex flash. You cannot slice and dice away. Woody, Woody again. once more. And Woody will get everything he wants. Now the gold lead's going to balloon. Mid and top are going to see plates going for both the solo laners. Oh, Aja's probably saying, what the hell? That should be my kill. Does not get this one. Wako playing super respectfully during this time as well. Maple's going to transfer the pressure down the mid lane to make sure Wako can step forward and actually grab this. Yes, and like you said, in the meantime, he can't be too upset. He is getting these solo turret plates for himself. And uh, again, just such good transferring of pressure from around the map. Really, really smartly done here by PSG. And this is the kind of gameplay we see from like the bigger teams within the tournament. I don't want to beg them up too much, but it is like the likes of the, you know, the LPL teams, the LCK teams. They come in and they just kind of make play after play oh, no. after play, and there's just nothing you can do. You suffocate them out as Maple gets another kill and desperation in the bot side. They had to throw out the Nautilus ult just to make sure Labrov didn't die. Oh my god, PSG are running all over them, and Maple saying, I'm not just the old man, I'm just not the shot caller. I got hands too. He's playing Akali, making plays happen, landing these E's, putting so much pressure down on the map. And Feels like they just checkmated PS or BDS yet again here. They had all early game kind of focus out of BDS, and they are just getting ran over here. 
I mean, just again, moment to moment to moment. It's not only just this one kill on the Sheo. Nuke's now overextended, and then the, the rest of the team are coming in to back up. Yeah, and it's just, again, when fl plays flow together because you have pressure, it's absolutely disgusting. The fact that, okay, we catch the jungler out, we kill the mid laner, and then you just keep going topside because, again, Aja has the push, so you can make these kind of shortcut plays, which should not work, where you're flashing through turrets to kill the Renekton, and it still works out for your side because you just are winning all over. So I love the idea of, like, you know, double hex flash, double hex flash <laughs> over the wall. And it's just like, what? No way this is going to be able to work. But I mean, again, look, Nuke, you just can't, you can't walk forward like that. You don't have flash. And this is kind of the the biggest weakness we've seen of kind of the, the mages coming back into the uh, into the mid lane is that when they don't have themselves any kind of... Oh, Lordy. Oh, I was going to say, I don't know if Aja is the one being caught out right now. We are going to see the Fates call come in. Keeper's Verdict doesn't really do anything. They missed the Fates Call as well as Lavrov taking a little bit of a trade back here. Finally, they will get themselves a bit of damage onto Junja. They'll drop down the Rift Hell top side as well. But what can PSG do around this? Because all five members of BDS went top lane. Yeah, they will at least probably be able to finish off this turret, channel some of that, or funnel some of that gold, excuse me, into Crownie since they have the Rift Hell to drop as well. Junjia missing that poppy knockback, but they're not done. They that got TP. TPs coming in. They have a TP coming in. That's going to be Maple. He's a bit far away from this right now. Aja taking a fair chunk of damage, but Crownie now looking for a little bit more. Wants to get those Rens in. The cleanse was not really going to do anything. And now Crownie. Oh, he's a little bit just too little, too late. Yeah, and you can see it on the face cam right there. He is not having a good time. No, tough game. But at the end of the day, not the worst thing in the world for BDS. They were able to get some kills, grab a turret plate or a turret back for themselves. Cheeky idea here for PSG. And I like how they are constantly looking for plays. And this is able to bait a lot of TPs. You start backing off here. If they land this knockback onto either the Renekton or just focus down Crowny so that the knock, uh, these Nautilus can't get re-thrown in onto Junjia, they can maybe disengage that situation. Still only giving one kill back is not the end of the world. The turret blade drops, and then here, just like the punish coming in, split focus. Maybe they could have got either one. Shao getting some damage onto Ajay, who did not even have his E available. So you can see how dangerous it is for Shao in this game. Anyone can jump on him and kill him. I mean, just like that, a flash forward and a bonk on the head. Imagine if he had a real weapon. And now Aja, he's going to try and jump over the wall, but he's just a little bit too far away. Junja going to take away the second dragon of the game for PSG, but it's getting it's getting all over the place right now. It's starting to get scrappy. Even Woody's taking away camps. <laughs> it's getting a little loosey-goosey here for PSG. They're feeling themselves. They have a big lead. They're getting their second dragon into the game. There's a lot of turrets still available for them to grab as well. Starting to work down this bot side one here as Adam is trying to hold on to it. Might be able to defend since Jinji is busy on the dragon, but we'll see how much work he can get done because already with Ooh. the lethality build, Wacko hurts. Yeah, Wacko hurts a lot. There's the MasterCard lane economy snapshot. I mean, it's kind of uh, to me, to you, but the people who are getting the gold are the people who win. Labrov does throw out all the hook. So let's put him in a little bit of danger, but he had Shea on the backside of this one here. And I think the big thing for me is that you have a Poppy who's now a level ahead of Talia. That should never happen. There should never be a Poppy 20 CS ahead of a Talia in the jungle. That's when you blame your laners. Yeah. Something went wrong. <laughs> Definitely wasn't me. I don't know how this happened. Uh, you can see massive advantage for PSG. And of course, the most important one, Woody. Yeah. Way ahead of LeBron because of those kills. Absolutely. Now we can see a big fight over this red buff right now. The Bramble backs realizing he is the center of attention right now. While that was all happening, you put five members to defend the red buff, and bot lane goes down. It is one of these situations where you cannot win an even number fight for BDS. So you have to bring extra members, but then if the enemy team respects the fact you have done that and just backs off, you have Aja alone on the top side, and like you already called out, Waco on the bot side grabbing that turret, and the gold lead continues to grow just from a red buff pressure. Rambleback secret agent, but I mean, yeah, they're three levels down. Aja, honestly, like, it just feels like if he just keeps himself and, you know, kind of away from the jacks, he survives. Yeah, I also think he could have just ran up. Yeah. I don't know. I guess Nautilus was behind him, technically cutting him off, but I think it's easier to run through Nautilus than the Callista at that point in time. Either way, uh, he punished Sheo, taught him a lesson, said, don't throw rocks at me. I will murder you. <laughs> I feel like it's a very clear he threat. escalated yeah. <laughs> It's like a little kid just throws a rock at you. He's like, do that again, and you will die. <laughs> it's just like, whoa. Okay. <laughs> and now Adam, I mean, he's got no magic resistance here. If Maple wants to take this fight, he bloody well can. Adam getting some five-point strikes to the face. He does miss out on that one. The perfect execution. Going to come in. Good flash from Adam to keep himself alive. But again, you're losing the dominance. You're losing the flash. And Adam getting this first pick on the Renekton. It's just not equaling it's the kind of advantage he needs. Now, Junja going to have the steadfast presence to keep him safe and alive. But I mean, they're just permanently in BDS's jungle. BDS need to get out. Yeah, this is such a painful game. It feels like for BDS, I will say. 
for how dominant this 16 minutes has felt, the gold lead is not totally insurmountable. And we have seen teams already at Worlds so far come back from worse positions than oh, this. Absolutely. And so I do think PSG don't want to get too far ahead of themselves. Remember, you still have to play this game out cleanly. If you get into a dragon fight where you hop into this enemy team and the you miss everything. TV. They're already jumping on the lab rob and they're pincering in. They're pushing them on all sides. Shao just goes immediately into stasis, but it's only to delay the inevitable. Maple picks himself up a fifth kill on this Akali. And this is just starting to snow, but like you said, it's not insurmountable, but it's definitely not easy. No, it is not. And welcome back to the PCS Maple. This is where you belong, let me tell you. Watching the LCS, he oh, was a bro. good player, but this is a way better performance out of him. Back in his comfort zone here on the world stage. Just doing so much right now. The carry's got the gold. They've got the towers to kind of boot them up. 3,000, 3,500. It's an infernal soul coming up in the next minute and a half to put them on soul points. It's just all snowing down, kind of moving forward. And the thing is, BDS, like you said earlier about their composition, this isn't a sit back, hope you can get the late game. Your late game doesn't really come on this co on this composition. Yes, it will be good, but it'll be just as good on PSG's side. Yeah, absolutely. There's no one who's ever going to be able to 1v1 Aja from here on out. You will have a permanent split push thrust unless something goes horrendously wrong elsewhere on the map. And so also with Maple this fed, you can go into these 1 3 1 setups that become an absolute nightmare. Waco starts ulting in from in the mid lane. You have these huge collapses that can happen, and just even compositionally from this far ahead. BDS's options are extremely limited, and it's basically hoping PSG dive a turret they shouldn't, overforce a Baron that they shouldn't. And uh, to hit back on that Maple point, it's just really cool to see one of the most storied players in the entirety of League Esports return. It's the tanks. Never mind, here comes Maple. <laughs> yeah, there's a flash away by Shao. You talk about him, he wants more! Is he gonna be able to get it? No, he won't get the kill and he'll get out as well. Maple is just trying to style on him. One of the most experienced mid laners <laughs> in the world. Really showing that he's not lost his touch. No, not at all. He's got some movement there, using the E left in the shroud to go for the assassination under the turret, but having an escape plan left over. Doesn't burn his flash despite how aggressively he was going in there. And yeah, I just think it's amazing to see him back here. I mean, he had his stint in NA. It was really cool to have him there. Did not have the synergy with his team, I think, as well as the best environment maybe to show his highlights. And it's cool now to see him return and not seem to miss a step at all, immediately start dominating in this playing stage and looking pretty good to potentially return to Swiss. And that's the big thing. Like, I mean, we're thinking of some of the mid laners that have been going over to the Swiss stage. You know, some of the biggest names, pretty much from every region. You've got Caps, arguably the most known mid laner from, LE, from LEC. Faker, no introduction needed. Xiaohu, who's always been just always around. Like, and then you can add Maple to this mix. We are just. We were just absolutely inundated with exceptional mid laners. There's a fantastic ultimate to bring away the Nautilus. Crowny trying to run away, and he will get back to his support. He's doing enough, but not quite, to keep himself alive. Now New goes golden, but only to die a second later. A TP out by Adam. That should tell you everything about this game. <laughs> Adam TP'd away and got stopped by, his, by the, the Poppy as well. They're all on the wrong side of the map. BDS are getting hunted down in the river there. Another clean fight, no deaths handed back over 13 to three. Adam is alive. He has no clear way out, but I think at this point, PSG has decided that the dragon is maybe worth more than Adam's Wacko life. Has. Wacko has decided that the dragon is worth more than Adam's life. He will finally get it. And now we'll see Adam just being delayed. Oh no. Oh. Keep your little pet crocodile alive. They're just going to let him go as well. So you know what? <laughs> they don't even care. <laughs> so it's like, why me? It's just like, you can go because you're the message you sent back to the group. Tell yeah. them what you saw. But I mean, look I mean, look at this. What an incredible start for this from Junja just to completely get rid of the engage. Yeah, knocks LeBron out. And Crowny almost made it back around. A nice flash to meet up with LeBron, who's then trying to peel him. And they almost got Maple but just too fed, able to finish him off. And on the flip side of the fight, it was a decimated front line, like you said, with LeBron forced out. Adam's trying to get out of there, almost did it. Did eventually make it out. Again, they crocodile, they deem not worth it. Maple, Maple 1v3, and he's still not going down just yet. He's got the rest of his team coming in. The five point strikes are on point. I don't think you can take on them just that much, you know, just like, just willy-nilly like that just yet. 1v3 is a bit of an overstep potentially there, though, with his Shroud able to stay alive and keep pressure up and, you know, game continues to march forward. The gold lead now, 6,000, three dragons in their back pocket, and Baron up means that sooner or later that will probably be going in their way as well. And I mentioned it back in Champ Select that if this Callista doesn't work, 
you are in a very serious problem here for BDS because that was kind of your ace in the hole. When the Zaya's not available, you can go towards this. It looked exceptional the other day, but now it didn't. You know, 2-3-1, he's still fine. He's not, Crowny's not the reason that, you know, BDS are losing this game by any stretch of the imagination, but it doesn't feel like it's anything exceptional. And it, again, I have to praise PSG's prep. They've come in so well prepared. They've known how to counter for absolutely everything. I mean, like, you think of the Callista being picked up here, and PSG picked Jax and Poppy. What are you supposed to do as the Callista? No, absolutely. I'm not quite sure. It does feel like we said in draft a little bit of a checkmate, knowing what BDS's pool is now having seen multiple series that they've had to play through and then having the answers. I mean, as much as you can say, oh, they're predictable. We know what they're going to do. People had said that about BDS when Golden Guardians was playing against them. Yep. Turned out they did not have the answers available. And here you can see PSG knowing what BDS wants to do, having champions that they can bust out in style on. The Maple Akali showing that he can answer the skill matchups when needed. When needed and... I mean, like you said, they're just in a hole where they have to send multiple members every single time. Didn't even realize we still had a Rift Herald to be used in this game, to be perfectly honest. Was taken, to be yeah, honest. honestly, I didn't even see it be taken, but Maple back up to full health in this top side. Has a Morello Namacon alongside that rocket belt. And yeah, I mean, you can go straight for this. They will get spotted out immediately. How do you get in, though? They're going to have to try and make it through blue buff, but it is an open path with the Infernal map. Yeah, a little bit more options available to them. Adam going to be not bonked away just yet. Going to get jumped on for the moment. They are trying to just see if they can catch up to Sheo. And if Sheo goes down, you don't have any contest whatsoever. He gets ignited. No look. Ignite from Wardy. And now he can really pick the target. Oh Crowny God. is not allowed to play the game. PSG have not only killed BDS, they're burying them as we speak. They're giving a memorial as they stand over the bodies of BDS, finding all those kills. Maple again, baiting in the entirety, having the stopwatch of available to corral them all together, giving the chase down such a clean play here as once again, it doesn't even need to be the cleanest engage. Junji misses his ultimate. He's getting stunned up. He's just messing around with the Renekton. Maple's 1v3 eats the entire Everything. ult from Nuke, able to have that stopwatch available. And then the chase down, Wako's finally able to find the time to go in, finish off Crowny. And again, Adam the Crocodile living. I mean, his KDA is looking decent. I uh, can't say the rest about the game, but you know, 0-1-0. Zero, and zero. Isn't isn't terrible, but I, I just I know I look we're trying to find some kind of fun moment in this because I mean You know the Red Bull Baron power play coming out here for B PSG. They're just smashing. There's no other way to put it This is domination right now. This is PCS number one saying look there is no more Oh LEC fourth would, would destroy us not even a hope No, this is I this is going into game three and having nothing working in either game to really fall back into. Maybe you go, let's go scaling again because game one wasn't this dominant at least, but BDS in trouble here. One more, why not? It just, it just feels so bad. I don't even really know what to say at this point. And for BDS fans, for European fans, I'm sorry that you had to wake up to this because this is brutal, Mark. I know we're I know we're independent observers right now, LPL, LCS, but th this is not fun. No, I'm not enjoying <laughs> no. this. So I'll, I'll tell you that. I, I mean, it is cool to see PSG styling. Not Incredible. saying I'm not, you know, happy for them or anything, but just the lack of competition in this game and the slow pace from game one has made it a very trying series, I think, for, for the European fan base to watch this right now and just wanting something more. After BDS had two good days back to back in their best of threes leading into this one. Yeah, and look, for BDS, this game is pretty much all but done, unless something crazy and, you know, which in fairness, it has happened before, I have seen it happen. Uh, but they're looking towards game three, and obviously we've talked about it a couple of times. Their draft hasn't really gone into anything. I think we've mentioned it a couple of times, that was Sheo's champion pool, Crownie's champion pool. That it just feels like these small little things are what are really limiting. BDS from having some kind of foothold in this series, and they're gonna have to throw something out. I mean, do you just bring out the Olaf? I know we were talking about the gods mean, but you need something. You need a lane to play around. Yeah, the first pick connecting has been something they had done throughout this plans, and it looked okay, but here, like you said, Shale getting pushed off the tanks. This has not looked like it. The Kalista that worked yesterday also falling apart. So 
I mean, you're gearing up now for a long, hard-fought reverse sweep if you have any hope. And that is quite a mental hole to dig yourself out of after a shellacking like this. Not only that, but you've after played three, two, three best of threes basically back to back to back. Yeah. This is a long thing. This is the thing. Everyone's talking about how amazing lower bracket runs are and how awesome they are. There's a reason why they're amazing, because the actual mental fortitude and physical kind of insurance that you need to go through to do that many games on a highest stage is, is exhausting. It's exhausting. I'm exhausted thinking about it. Yeah, you end your day, you immediately go into a pick band meeting for the next one. You scrims, have to VOD review yeah, things that you haven't review. seen. Yeah, like you said, probably do a round of scrims if anyone's up for it. Yeah. You know, it can be exhausting when you have to play day after day after day, and BDS had a great run going, but coming up short this time around. Also, the difficulty of losing early on in the double elim is you wonder about who your opponents would have been on the flip side of yeah. the bracket playing Gam, who did look a lot better early today. So not to say that they necessarily would have won or anything, but it is one of those times where you're always playing the what ifs in your head. Yeah, liter literally looking at the what ifs of the world and how it's all kind of coming together. But what if PSG were to throw it, huh? huh? Uh, what if PSG huh? were to five-man the fountain? Yeah, what I if? mean, and give Crowny all the kills, huh? I've seen it before, not on a professional stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, I've seen it on a professional stage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the LPL's got 17 teams of widely varying quality. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it happens, unfortunately, when you start to dilute the pool. But Super Minions now and bot. You got doubles coming in. Crowny going to be the one to deal with that. I mean... It's your last hurrah, really, here for BDS. You need something, anything, and it has to come from anyone on your team. Honestly, it, it can happen, but it will just delay the inevitable, feels like, because you're dealing with doubles in every lane. Doubles in every lane, Infernal Soul finished off as well. They're just going to sit here and wait, see if BDS want to make a play, or if they'll just let them end it. There we go. They're going to look for it. There's the knock-up. They're only right back onto their base. They're going to use the Talia wall, but Adam dies for only the second time. Through the wall, the turret goes down. They do get the fates called down on top of Aja, but he is just too damn tanky. Sheo goes back onto his fountain to survive, but PSG 2 0, and they're not even breaking a sweat. They heard the complaints online, the slow game one, and they said, We got you, and immediately deliver a smackdown onto BDS, running over them that game. Final kill count up to 19, couldn't quite get there. 3 and 19, close. Close to nice, not there. Not quite. <laughs> not quite, but I mean, I, we've said it all. We had so much time at the end of that game to kind of just hype up PSG and, and really kind of unfortunately condemn BDS. I'm sure there's a lot of people online saying we were super negative, but I mean, they need something exceptional to come back into this series. Yeah, they really do. I'm watching these player camps like a hawk, trying to see the emotional state for these two teams. You know, PSG locked in. I'm sure they feel yeah, great. They, they have a job still to do. Yeah, they know it's not done. A lot of these guys, I'm sure Maple has of the, all of them been there by far the most, but yeah. PSG is an organization extremely successful. They dominate usually domestically. And then the question is how far can they always get internationally? And MSI was a bit of a disappointment for them. So I'm sure they're not happy just with this right now. They really want to finish this one out. Yeah, the bounce back has been vicious. So we're going to send it over to Ender, Goldberg and Raz to break down. Is he awake whatever, this yeah. time? Is he awake? He I'm better be. Uh, BDS, are, BDS, are, <laughs> BDS are nearly dead. So go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. What's this? I wow. mean, How not, not pulling any punches. He really isn't. He it, really isn't. Look, it's tough over here. That was an absolute calamity yeah. from BDS. From the draft and trying to play around this, like, Callista lane on the bot side with the mages coming in jungle and mid to then just getting beaten time and time again. They just got rolled over. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just have to get it out of the way immediately, okay? Like, yeah. <laughs> Get what out of the way? Why are we first picking Renekton? If only yeah. to play Renekton, you already have to bend the Rumble because you know you're going to lose on it. You have to bend the Cannon because you know you're going to lose on it. You go into the second ban phase, you bend more top laners, and they play Jax anyway, and you still lose on it. What was the idea of this? What was the idea of this entire Goldberg? draft? I don't know. Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead. There it is. Well, you, got, you, got, you got your answer. Um, yeah, we had this conversation actually a few days ago in the tournament, just like Renekton priority in general. I, I'm not a fan of Renekton priority. The only time in which I was okay with it was in the case of Robo because he just had a really limited champion pool and was going towards something like, you know, Malphite into Kennen, and that was just tough. So this, this one's harsh. Um, I think I expected the Kennen ban. I wanted the Kennen ban. I didn't think that they would go towards this priority. Like, J4 was an option. Like, you can hold picks a little bit more, but it seems like they um, are just overly worried about Aja, and there's a reason for it. it. It looks almost like instead of playing full late game, they're like, let's play full early game. Yeah. But then Aja, you mentioned him, 
took over and it started from level one interrupting Shio's jungle clear and after that moving around the map forcing flashes away from both Shio and Nuke that were converted on later. Yeah the game's just become so much easier to play from the get-go having that jungle tracking going and then it's just getting in there once again with priority. He's already been back, got a sheen, Shio can't play against that. That's once again the priority. What does he do with this priority now? He takes a page out of the Atom book, moves top lane priority into mid lane instead. Now Nuke doesn't have any flash either. Yeah it was brutal and I mean even just going Going back into the first clear for the Talia, not only were you pushed off your buff and you were now one camp behind from the Poppy, you didn't actually get an idea where the par Poppy even started because both side lanes were starting in lane. So then go into an invade, oh, everything is gone. So at that point, Talia is already pretty far behind. Uh, so it's really rough to see that happen. And then, of course, you already mentioned you got the rest out yeah. of there. A, a mage the jungler being down on tempo is not what you want to yeah. see. And on top of that, you don't want to see your jungle and mid laner getting punished for not having flash. So in the five minutes after getting those flashes, Shio and Nuke both died twice. Here, Shio is like standing over the Dragon Ball trying to steal it away, and Maple with great pathing through the fog board just pounces. Yeah, it just becomes a bit greedy taking these approaches to it when you don't have that flash. I think this one could be a bit more inexcusable inexcu uh, as it's just in the river, but there's instances where that Drake should really not be contested at all whatsoever. Nuke ste stepping up here trying to save his jungler when he doesn't have fly flash either. Shouldn't be contested either. Nuke will step up in mid lane again later, which is right here. Still no flash and he has no business being this far up in the lane. And timing right now throughout this game has been really unfortunate for PSG's side. There was one time where uh, I think it was the first Rift Herald that was coming up there was Talia going straight for it, but then, of course, Akali, recognizing we got to get a ward on that, was able to not only get the ward off on that, be in fog, catch Talia that was walking towards it, and then get a kill off of it. So there was Molt. Not only were you already snowballing to begin with, the timing was so unfortunate for Talia that she was just getting run over regardless. Listen, yes, right? I'm listening. I didn't believe in BDS yesterday, okay? Yeah. And I know people came up for me and they're like, you need to apologize. You should. Okay, and I will. Not. I will apologize. I'm gonna. I will. And I've. You know. You remember this one, okay? So instead of being realistic, I spent the entire pause of. Ah, <laughs> uh, that hobby. <laughs> And we're getting that BDS 3-2. Forget that 3 yo, my boys. They're going to bounce back. We're going to... They may have never gone back in a reverse sweep, uh -huh. but they got this. I have no okay, okay, go for it. Why, but I just legal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate I have your enthusiasm. Bolded, there's sweat on it. It's that's, that's That's what? great. But what do they do? Like, is there anything you would like to see from them? Because I honestly can't see it. Like, PSG are playing better in the game, uh, and the how? draft diff is huge. How dare you? Be realistic. To get back to you. You need Thank a piss you. test. Hey, listen, that Renekton, just throw it out the window. You know, it doesn't work. Like, d d don't first pick. I don't care. Let get Nuke on the Asir, okay? Mm -hmm. He's got two champions. Orianna, it'll get banned. Asir won't get banned. Just put him on it. It's going to be fine, all right? I know we're going to struggle a bit. That first game wasn't as bad as it seems. I know it was slow paced, but we were so close to winning the fights every now and then. Give me Adam on a champion where he just fully sends it. We got one game left. Backs against the wall. How do you want to go out? With regrets or by playing your heart out? Regrets. Uh, blue side, uh, Raz, what, do you have any more cope for me? Uh, I actually think we're playing closer. Don't even try. Uh, we're playing closer <laughs> to the tournament meta, I think. He's going for it. Uh, just He's because fired. I think the Poppy had such insane value. Renekton, Callista, and Nautilus on the board. We haven't been seeing too much uh, Poppy so far. Get, I'm not even looking at it. Yeah, just keep going, keep going. But I, I think the reason we haven't been seeing so much Poppy is because in players teams, I think the quality of play and trying to find your fights without hard engage hasn't been there. Now PSG has been playing at such a high level that, yeah, this makes sense. Their draft is great. The the rel uh, flex has been perfect. Then they pick up Poppy just because. You know, it's also a flex just in case they wanted to throw a top side. So I'm now, I'm flip-flopping. And starting into the today, I thought I had a little bit of faith into BDS. No more. It's gone. Wow. My BDS faith is out of here. Goldborg, you have three words to say why BDS will win. Because they will kill the enemy nexus. That was so many more than three words. PSG Talon's domination continues here at Worlds 23 as they are one win away from advancing to the Swiss stage. We'll be right back for match point. <laughs> Don't be too stressed. Take the game chill. Your first game was not as bad as it looks. So play it with confidence and you guys will win. All right? Yeah, right. Let's go, guys. Not really much you can do about that. They're going to be able to get the flick back nicely done. But Shale has no flash. He's nowhere to go. And that's going to be an easy kill. Seeing if they can go for something. There's the double hex flash. Nobody ever expects the double hex flash. You cannot slice and dice away. Woody, Woody again. once more. And Woody will get everything.
anything he wants. Here we go. They're going to look for it. There's the knock up. They're only right back onto their base. They're going to use the Talia wall, but Adam dies for only the second time.